The Mongol Slavs, there existed the belief that one of the most deserving ancestors resided in the house in the form of a spirit. This is an ancient polytheistic representation of a mythical ancestor with the most widespread names being Elder and Grandfather. Various names were attributed to these household spirits by the Slavs, the most common terms being Ded, Dedek, Dedushka, Died, Dedo, Stopan, Starets, Starats, Stari, all of, me, all of which mean uh, either Grandfather or Elder. Appellatives associated with these spirits indicate their dwelling place within the house, such as Domovoy or Domovik, which are derived from the word Dom, meaning home, as well as Stopan, which means a householder. The household grandfather was envisioned as an old man who could transform into a serpent, most notably a grass snake, which was often kept in the household and uh, protected the house, its inhabitants and the property. According to some beliefs, new houses didn't have such a spirit because, because they were simply new and uh, only acquired such a spirit after the, the eldest of the family would pass and therefore would become the family guardian spirit. He was invoked for help, offerings of food and libations were poured for him and uh, the cultic image of this ancestor was uh, a wooden or clay idol which stood at the household altar and uh, was later replaced by Christian saints, that is to say the icons of Christian saints and uh, crosses. In some South Slavic regions, like parts of Serbia, Bulgaria and Macedonia, these cultic objects representing the elder stood near the hearth as the central point of the ancestral cult and they often had a practical purpose, such as, for example, holding earthen dishes for baking breads. But this cultic nature is also evident from the fact that it, it was invoked and invited during the winter solstice celebration, which is called Koleda Badnyak or Badnik among the South Slavs, with the words, come grandfather, let us have dinner. So the grandfather, the mythical ancestor, was invited to dine with the household for this uh, evening. One of the names used for this uh, household spirit was also Pop, which is a South Slavic term for an Orthodox Christian priest, and um, which often replaced the original term due to the Orthodox Christian priests being usually elderly and having long grey or white beards. But the probable and more archaic reason for this connection between the mythical ancestor and the priest is due to the fact that in earlier times the elder or the grandfather was also a type of folkish priest who performed uh, sacrificial rituals. And consequently in the Middle Ages it was not uncommon for South Slavs, that is to say for South Slavic Orthodox Christian priests or archbishops for that matter to be referred to as grandfather by the names Ded, Dedo, Did or even Elder such as Starets or Starats and even now higher priests in some South Slavic regions are called grandfathers or elders. The terms elder or grandfather predate Christianity and um, even after Christianity the Slavs respected these old people, pious and just souls, as a memory of their polytheistic beliefs in the spirits of the ancestors and in certain regions elder was an honorary title for a person who was well skilled in folk medicine and knowledge. Until recently, among uh, some South Slavic regions, each uh, village had its own elders which usually uh, gathered and settled disputes between villages which, which were usually 
about uh, land or marriage and so forth. In Serbia and other South Slavic lands, the upright pillar of the house which supports the roof beams is called pop, that is to say priest, or dead, that is to say grandfather, but in some regions also stožer and, and soha. Stožer translates to pillar, and it um, is also employed for the central pole of the threshing floor, which we will understand why later on. On the other hand, soha is a prevalent Slavic term denoting an idol, with its original meaning being a branching tree, specifically referring to a cultic tree often considered as the cosmic axis. Consequently, every idol within the shrine or temple serves as its axis, just as the grandfather pillar functions as the central axis of the household. The role of the household elder idol is um, confirmed by folk religious ceremonies. Offerings of food and drinks are made to him on Christmas Eve, inviting him to dinner, as we saw. In return, protection of the house, field and livestock fertility, as well as the progress in craftsmanship, are expected. Border stones and wooden stakes at the entrance of courtyards supporting the winds of the gate were also called elders, grandfathers or priests. This is because at one point they were actual idols or were simply regarded as uh, the ancestral spirits residing in these objects. According to traditions, the Slavs maintained household and field idols, often in the shape of an ordinary stone. This is evident by the toponyms of hilltops, fields, springs and settlements derived from places where shrines housed idols of elders. Believers gathered at these locations for prayers and sacrifices, seeking prosperity for their crops and livestock. And in fact, the last polytheistic pagan site in Europe was such a grandfather stone which was located in Minsk, today in Belarus, and it was destroyed in the 20th century. Beside the stone, there was an ancient sacred oak tree and a consecrated flame flickered nearby, which was, um, which was uh, kept by the priest, the local priest folkish priest. The premises of the sacred space were enclosed by a wattle fence and the rituals involved the burning of offerings such as sheep, goats, pigs and roosters. The devotees seeking blessings presented monetary offerings also and in return the guardian, the priest, would bless them by sprinkling water from a nearby well. This is, of course, the famous sacred well, which we see in various mythologies of Europe. Libations of wine and honey, as well as milk, were also poured on the stone, believed to possess healing properties. With the urbanization in the 1870s, the sacred fire was ex extinguished and the local priest, as well as the populace, was prohibited from making offerings and the stone was destroyed, actually not destroyed, but desecrated, sorry, by the local clergy who put a cross on it, basically. By the 1880s, authorities expelled or killed the guardian priest and uh, felled the sacred oak tree. A Christian priest was uh, appointed, yet locals persisted in worshipping at the stone into the early 20th century. The son of the late guardian priest took on the responsibilities, but in 1927 he was no longer permitted to continue by the authorities. So that's probably the last authentic pagan ritual in Europe, which was um, banished and uh, stopped basically by the Soviets. Field idols, referred to as elders or grandfathers, were linked to herding and safeguarding livestock and its products, as well as protecting farmers and crops. The celebration day of the mythical ancestor, represented by the elder idol, occurred in spring. 
During this time, prayers and sacrifices were offered to safeguard crops from uh, adverse weather conditions, aligning with the movement also of livestock to mountain pastures. Similarly, in autumn, celebration took place to express the gratitude to the elders, to the grandfathers, who protected the fields and the livestock during the year and provided with uh, provided with uh, bountiful crops and the safe return of the livestock from the mountains. Spring festivities were also marked by the tradition of carrying household idols across fields, uh, accompanied by songs and prayers directed towards them and later on towards God, with the idols eventually being replaced by crosses or icons of Christian saints. In autumn, a ritual uh, involving the preparation of God's beard from the last stalk of wheat uh, was also observed. This God's beard, known among the Slavs as dead or stary, meaning grandfather or elder, signifies the ancestor's beard. However, in Russia it is dedicated to Veles, the Slavic god associated with the dead, fertility, wealth and abundance. Thus, it is evident that the cult of the household ancestors was intertwined with that of Veles, who is often bestowed with the same titles of elder or grandfather. God's beard, basically the beard of Veles, was placed on the central pole of the threshing floor, which uh, is called Stoger, and uh, which was itself cultic object and served as an idol. Therefore, the, the god's beard was placed on the idol which represented him. During the 12-day winter celebrations of Koleda, known as Kolade, Kolyada, etc., a masked procession unfolds with carolers singing songs. The masks are often zoanthropomorphic and uh, crafted from animal hides, furs, skins, bones and various materials and are known by various names among the Slavic people, but for the sake of simplicity, here we're going to call them Koledari. Uh, together with the carolers, they visit homes, they are performing magical rituals, magical acts and dances for the household's well-being and prosperity in the coming year. Symbolizing the ancestors from the other world, they are led by a mask known as the Grandfather, again and um, potentially representing Veles, the oldest collective ancestor. The grandfather initiates the dances, he performs the magical actions like sprinkling water and convey, conveys wishes for a prosperous new year uh, in livestock and crops. The carolers often receive gifts, including round breads and sometimes money. In some regions, rituals occur around a tray with ritual bread and food. Carolers, led by the grandfather, circle the tray three times clockwise, singing, singing verses. Finally, they lift the tray, concluding with the grandfather's blessing. As we've seen, the mythical household ancestor shares strong connections with Veles, playing various roles and uh, appearing in different forms. In this quick exploration, we've only scratched the surface of the crucial role which the ancestral cult played in the pre-Christian Slavic traditions, but there is so much more to uncover. If you are interested and want to dive deeper, I suggest that you check out my books, Slavic Traditions and Mythology. There's two volumes of that book. And if you want to support this channel in producing other videos, please consider becoming a patron. There is a link in the description below. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.